let's fire up the Solera sim and start using the management interface. So I've got a management VM that's up and running on the network. So let's just open up the console. Of course, I could RDP into this host, which would perform a little bit nicer. But just for the sake of quick showing here, this will work fine. So I'm going to open up the console. The, I use a VM as a management workstation. It's just easy to make sure I've got all the prerequisites that I'm going to use. In this case, to use the Solera sim, the only prerequisite is that you have uh, Java installed. If you don't have the right version installed, it'll automatically notify you when you get up and running. So here I've added the particular uh, uh, name of the uh, Solera into my DNS server. And this is basically the beginning of the login GUI. So you're always going to log in as nasadmin, nasadmin, unless you basically change the default username and password. So if you get a particular, you know, HTTP 503 unavailable error, just chill out and try again in a few minutes. It's basically because all of the services haven't started up. This is usually just because you've just rebooted the Solera sim. You get a message of the day, just like a real Solera, giving you kind of status information, those sort of things. I'm going to just notify that I don't really want to see this message again, and we'll continue on. Now, just like a real Solera, the little check mark represents the full Solera configuration. In this case, we only have one data mover, but the Solera can have up to eight. As well, you can actually have many Soleras that you manage from one GUI. Now, you'll notice that these are grayed out just because they're not actually in use. That server 2 represents the data mover, which is really the Blackbird service running in the control station in the Solera sim. So let's start licensing those uh, features. What you do just by clicking on this licenses tab, and then you'll notice that you're presented with this tick mark list. So let's start to apply um, those new interfaces. You'll notice that there's very strict licensing enforcement here. <laughs> um, so you don't need any sort of additional key or anything like that, just press OK. Obviously, I should reiterate that you're not allowed to do this for uh, any sort of production use. It's only for test development and, uh, you know, getting some experience using a Solera. Now, this is going to generate an error. And I wanted to do this on purpose so that you could see what the error looked like and see how to fix it. This is going to be the last thing that we're going to need to do via the control station uh, command line. So what happened here? When we change the Solera serial number, the licensing table gets confused because it says, hey, this is the Solera I thought it was. So once you open up uh, the Solera SIM console, what we're going to need to do is just reinitialize the licensing table to go, look, this is a consider this a brand new Solera, so to speak. So we're going to log in as nasadmin, nasadmin. And this is the command, nas license, nas underscore license, dash init, done, great. Let's go back, we'll minimize that and go back to the management workstation. I'm just going to hit reset and then I'm going to uh, um, refresh the page. One thing just to know about the Solera management console is that it, it does have a dynamic interface um, and it will refresh after a certain amount of time no matter what. But by doing that refresh, you're just forcing the refresh to occur immediately. Okay, so now let's license each one of these features. The advanced edition basically enables some advanced features, some advanced management options in the GUI. Um, so for example, data migration capabilities, the ability to configure file systems with very, very specific layouts as opposed to generic pools. Generic pools are simple and easy, of course, but sometimes you want to be able to specify the exact configuration of a file system. So now let's just repeat. NFS will allow you to basically create NFS exports. Some customers, for example, use Solaris just for SIFs, i.e. to replace Windows file servers and consolidate them and have virtual SIF servers, um, or for iSCSI. Um, but in this case, we're going to use NFS as well because NFS is a neat way to uh, store data stores for ESX purposes. We're going to do more with that later on. And you'll notice that as you've licensed these, bit by bit, individual features are going to turn on. So data migration turned on because we enabled the advanced uh, Solera manager uh, feature earlier. Next, you'll see the NFS exports will light up because we just enabled NFS. 
Next, we're going to do SIFs. One thing that's very, very neat about a Solera is that uh, we, we've licensed SIFs from Microsoft. And this basically allows a Solera to appear just like a Windows file server. You can manage it from, uh, you know, uh, users and computers, the standard MMC plugin. You can basically take VSS consistent snapshots, not only from the Solera management GUI, but also from the traditional Windows management dialog. But one thing that's different is a single Solera can look like thousands of Windows uh, uh, file servers. So you can see that NFS lit up. You can see that SIFS just lit up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to license iSCSI. So this allows you to create iSCSI LUNs, iSCSI targets, um, which we're going to use for um, uh, some of the Site Recovery Manager stuff later on. I'll show you later on how to connect both NFS data stores as well as IS iSCSI based VMFS data stores. Some very neat things about the iSCSI target on the Solera is that you can have many, many iSCSI targets. You'll see that later. Next we'll license Snapshore. Snapshore is the ability to create snapshots and writable snapshots, both of file systems for SIFs and for NFS, and for iSCSI. You can create very large numbers of snapshots, up to 96 per file system, and up to 1,000 per iSCSI LUN. These snapshots being writable allows you to do a lot of neat, cool stuff too, whether you're talking about you know, Oracle databases for instant test and dev copies, or iSCSI, where we've integrated with Exchange and with SQL Server's VSS capabilities. The last thing we're going to license is something called Replicator. Replicator is the uh, you know ability from one for one Solera to be able to replicate to another, either at one site or across sites. So, for example, Solera Replicator can be used for DR for file systems or for iSCSI, and it is integrated with um, Site Recovery Manager. Uh, it is notable that Site Recovery Manager only supports iSCSI at this particular point. Um, so that's the use case that we're going to be doing. iSCSI and Fiber, uh, not NFS data stores. We're asking VMware to add NFS data store support as fast as we possibly can. So now we've got a fully licensed um, Solera. Uh, and we've now got a fully functional Solera. You can use it for anything. I just wanted to reiterate um, that uh, uh, it can't be used for any sort of production use, um, just for test development um, and for learning purposes. Um, also, if you had paused it on that earlier frame, you'd see that there's a public support forum. So if you just type in forums.emc.com, that's basically a public forum for all sorts of EMC support stuff. You'll need to create yourself a PowerLink login, uh, but anybody can do that. And uh, it does enable you to be able to use the self-serve forums, which are great. Um, it is notable that the Solera SIM is, is not a, a production platform and therefore the support that you'll get on the forum uh, is, is good, but it's not the same thing that you'd see uh, if you were obviously a production customer. So uh, enjoy and follow the next couple of sessions to see how we're going to use this.